Hey there, I'm Catherine. I'm a certified mental health and weight loss mindset coach. And today we're gonna to be talking about the mind-body connection and how having a healthy brain leads to a healthier body. If you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, then this video is definitely for you. God gave us an amazing organ that's so complex that neuroscientists are still discovering new things about how it works every single day. It's called our brain. And our brain isn't just an organ full of tissues and neural pathways. It's also the home of our mind and it's where all of our thoughts form. So a thought becomes an action and an action becomes our behavior and our behaviors shape our identity. So if we wanna have a healthy mind and start to think new healthy thoughts, we have to address the health of our actual brain. So don't worry, I'm not gonna be diving too deep into science-based evidence about our brain here, but I just wanna start helping you see your brain as an organ differently. I want you to realize that its health affects your decisions and your actions affect your health. So when your brain works right, you work right. And when it doesn't, that's when we run into so many of the issues in life. If you have an unhealthy brain, you can probably guess your mind, which houses your thoughts, <laughs> won't be the healthiest either. You know, when you battle things like anxiety or depression, sleeplessness, poor diet, or even lack of proper movement, your brain is gonna be unhealthy, which is gonna lead you to making choices that only amplify those issues. So our brain affects our body. So to have a healthy body, we need to have a healthy brain. So emotions are also housed in the brain and they have so much to do with how our body, our actual physical body feels. The Bible tells us that we are transformed, which means we're changed, transformed means changed, by the renewing of our minds. So Romans 12, two says, don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good Good, pleasing and perfect will and renewing our minds just is keeping our brain healthy and we're gonna be living in the perfect will of God which includes living a healthy life that is his perfect will for your life so just like your brain is connected to your overall health so is the food that you eat you know your food really affects your mood and I don't know if you just learned something new right interesting in the comments below but you know the types of food that we eat are linked to our moods and even certain types of mental health issues there was a research study done in 2017 where researchers found that when people with moderate to even severe depression underwent some nutritional counseling and they ate a diet that was just a little bit healthier for 12 weeks. Their symptoms improved drastically and over 32% of those people that were in that study experienced so much better mental health that they no longer even qualified for having a mood disorder at all. That's huge just from changing your diet. So food definitely affects your mood and if you want to feel well it's important to eat well. What you eat affects your brain and its ability to balance the chemicals and promote better mental health inside and out. So I'd like to know, what types of foods do you think make you feel better but then leave you feeling yucky later on? Let me know in the comments. For me, the type of food that I thought made me feel better was chips. Like if you've been following me for a while, you know I was kind of a chipaholic and that was what I ran to to help me feel better. But ultimately eating those chips made me feel a lot worse. So I felt tired and groggy and just unmotivated to do anything after I ate certain types of food. So food isn't the only factor to good brain health though, obviously. The thoughts we think determine our actions. And I know I keep saying this, but it's totally true. I want you to get this. Right, so let's look at your life like a fruit tree or grapes that are hanging from a vine like let's just pretend for a minute with me okay if you want to produce good fruit and you're you're growing something and you want something good to grow you have to nourish it properly right so just like that if you want to produce good fruit in your life you have to nourish yourself properly your branches have to stay connected to the vine in order to receive the nutrients that it needs or it's going to wither and fall to the ground and that vine that we have to stay connected to according to the word the vine that gives us all life and life abundantly is Jesus and we can't nourish our lives with things that don't bring life and this includes our thoughts 
what we look at, what we listen to, what we spend our time meditating on. It's gonna determine the health of our brain also, but it's gonna affect our thoughts. So if you want a healthy brain, you need a healthy body and vice versa. The physical condition of your body can drastically change your emotional state, for better or for worse. So if you still don't believe our thoughts and our emotions affect our body, let's think about this. Have you ever gotten nervous and you had to give a big presentation or you knew something was coming up like you had some kind of um, evaluation at work and you got really nervous? What were some of the things that happened because of that emotion? Typically you're gonna have something like maybe sweaty hands or an increased heart rate or, or I don't know, even like a flushed face. Something will happen physically because of the emotion, the nervousness that you feel. So stress also affects our body, like just that feeling of stress lowers our immune system. And if we stay under a chronic state of stress, it's even gonna alter our blood cell function. So our emotions definitely affect our body, they're connected. And you know, stress and anxiety causes brain fog too. I've definitely experienced this so much in my life. And when this happens, Anything I wanna do in the day just seems like an impossible task, like I'm not gonna get it done. I end up wanting to veg out in front of the TV and do nothing. I feel sleepier, I'm unmotivated to do things like exercise. I make poor food choices, which only makes the brain fog worse and it amps up my stress and anxiety. So really it's like a vicious cycle. But here's how I learned to stop the cycle. First of all, being self-aware is a really good start. Taking an inventory of what you're thinking and how you're feeling, just take a minute, like skirt, stop. Okay, let's think for one second. How am I feeling right now? And the second step that you can do is just recognize the negative or anxious thought that you're having and take them captive. And then meditate for a moment on the peace of God and the goodness of God. Then I breathe deeply for just a second. It only takes a minute to breathe. I mean, we're breathing already as it is, but intentional breathing, like deep, meditative breaths and if I can I remove myself from the environment that's causing all the stress and anxiety for just a moment and even if I can't technically remove myself from that environment like sometimes it may be just driving I can't remove myself from that if I'm in the driver's seat right but there are times when I can just excuse myself to the restroom and say hey excuse me I'm gonna be right back and then I can go in the bathroom and give myself a moment to breathe and then I can think of a few things that make me happy just little things like my kids or the trees and the birds and the sky I love to look at the sky and then I can just practice gratitude and in that moment right as I'm doing that it only takes a few seconds it doesn't take very long my entire body changes so if you're battling with stress and anxiety that seems to kind of like make your body do things that you don't like and you're feeling even like anxiety can mimic like heart problems even you start to feel like am I having a heart attack is something wrong with me no just go take a few minutes Minutes, do some of these things and you'll be able to relax and when I finish doing those things I now have energy I'm thinking clearly the symptoms of all of that anxiety that my body was feeling have totally vanished I'm able to relax my muscles my heart rate goes back down and I don't feel that compulsive need that I used to feel to medicate myself with food that only leaves me feeling worse like sluggish and even more stressed out there's so much research out there about the mind-body connection it's amazing you could learn so much just from Googling the topic or even just reading the word. Like Proverbs 23, seven says, as a man thinks, so is he. Our body goes in the direction of our thoughts and our thoughts produce our identity and our identity is what we do, how we act, how we view the world, how we view ourselves. It's who we are. So I wanna show you a couple more examples of how our emotions affect our body. Let's start with unresolved anger and unforgiveness. Chronic anger puts you into fight or flight mode, which results in a lot of changes in your body, starting with an increased heart rate, higher blood pressure. And if you stay in this state long enough, these changes in your body, like prolonged over time, can increase your risk of depression, heart disease, and even diabetes. Studies have found that the act of forgiveness can reap huge rewards for your health. It totally reverses a lot of this. It lowers the risk of heart attack. It improves your cholesterol. Forgiveness helps you to sleep better and reduces pain in your body. It reduces your blood pressure and it reduces the levels of anxiety that you have. It even helps with depression when you forgive. So anger affects things in really simple ways too, like just the tone of your voice and your facial expressions. 
Have you ever tried telling someone that you love them with angry eyebrows? So when my oldest was a little boy, we would watch Larry Boy, which for those of you who don't know, is just a spinoff from a VeggieTales character turned superhero. And we would watch Larry Boy when he was about three years old, and we would talk about this one episode called Larry Boy and the Angry Eyebrows. And this episode was so profound to me because I just am such a deep thinker anyway. I'm watching this episode being like, what in the world? It's all about angry eyebrows and how that once you get those angry eyebrows on your face, it affects everything and everyone around you. You could be the happiest person walking down the street and then suddenly those cartoon angry eyebrows would like attach themselves to a tomato or something walking down the road and they would instantly become grumpy and mean and not tolerate anyone and all those things. So I thought how funny that is, you know, even all those years ago, because my oldest is now 19 and this is when he was three, so it's been quite a long time ago. But I used to think, man, that is so true. So we started an experiment, he and I, and I said, okay, I want you to try and tell me, I love you. And he, you know, with your eyebrows regular, and he would say, I love you. And I'd say, now make I angry eyebrows and try and say, I love you. And he'd go, I love you. And it couldn't come out right. And he's like trying to keep his eyebrows all a certain way. So fun experiment. If you ever want to try, try saying, I love you with your eyebrows all like mean and angry and ang like an angry face and angry like feel in your body and try to say I love you. It just doesn't come out the same. It's actually quite hilarious to do, but it's a real fun experiment to see this actual true fact that our minds and bodies are 100% connected and what goes on up here affects our physical body. And that is my whole message. If you guys are following me, if you just started following me, if you've been following me for a while, I want to remind you, but if you're just following me, this is my message that our external Internal follows our internal. If we can get our internal bodies healthy, our external body will just follow. And I help women with that in the area of weight loss because so many times we are holding on to so much emotional weight and pain that we aren't really letting go of and all the things are shoved away somewhere in the recesses of our mind and we're not willing to go and deal with them and our physical bodies are carrying all the extra weight of the weight that we have going on inside of us that we really aren't willing to deal with or look at and it really is seems magical it's not it's just amazing to see how this concept actually plays out in people's lives. And I really love helping people see this, like, okay, what goes on up here affects your body because actions start with a thought always starts with a thought, but our minds are connected to our body. So if you're feeling really yucky, your body's probably going to follow suit. If you start feeling bad, if you start um, dealing with the emotions that you have going on in your mind, if you start giving yourself the space to actually say, okay, like I'm going to take a break and I'm going to pay attention to how my body's feeling right now. How, what am I thinking? What's going on? If you give yourself that space, you'll start to be able to feel things and then you'll be able to deal with how you feel and heal from the things that you're trying to deal with and feel. So the next time you're struggling with certain thoughts or feelings that may even manifest as pain like in your body, take a step back and evaluate. So you could do this by asking yourself a few questions, like what types of food have I eaten today? Because food affects your mood, right? Do I have unresolved anger? Am I holding on to unforgiveness? Is there some kind of hurt or pain that I'm still harboring that I need to set at the feet of Jesus and let him heal in my life? Am I spending time nourishing my mind with good things? What are you putting into your body? Like your mind and your mouth, both. Like you could ask, what, what's been going in there? Because a lot of times it's garbage in, garbage out. And I don't mean you're filling your face with literal garbage, but there are times when we are filling ourselves with garbage. Like what we watch, what we hear, what we, you know, what we're tuning into, what we're eating. It isn't what we need and it, and it is like garbage to our bodies. And so garbage comes out in all types of different forms. So you could ask yourself something like, how have I been spending my time lately? And is what I've been spending my time on actually nourishing me or mm, maybe not so much. So when you're trying to lose weight or even just gain a better mental health state, 
pay attention to your brain's health. And remember, your brain isn't just a place where things happen to keep you alive. It's an organ that houses your thoughts, your memories, your feelings, and your emotions too. And it's the place where all of our hormones are released, which is a topic for another day. It's all a one that could be all on its own. But for a healthy brain, it helps you produce healthy hormone levels. And when all those things internally are healthy, your entire body is healthy inside and out. All right, so if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and joining the Healthy from the Inside Out community. And if you're looking for a group of women to encourage and support you on your journey to better health, go join my free Facebook group. All right, that's it for today, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, keep making choices for a healthier life from the inside out.